Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the Linus Pauling Institute's webinar, Our Future, Our Health by Dr. Emily Ho. Uh, my name is Alexander Michaels. I am a research associate at the Linus Pauling Institute. I'm also functioning as the communications officer. So if any of you have uh, heard, uh, you know, uh, wrote into the Linus Pauling Institute or, or, or uh, communicated with us uh, via all the different channels, you're probably talking to me most of the time. Um, I'll start off this today by just saying, uh, wow, um, this is quite a crowd that we have registered for this conference. This is one of the largest audiences the Oregon State University has seen since uh, this whole year. And that's pretty impressive given the fact that um, we've been all online pretty much for the last six months during this pandemic. Um, I'll, I'll be functioning as the moderator for this webinar, um, and part of that duty is that I'm going to be uh, fielding your questions. Um, one of the things I'd like to point out to you is if you look below, there's a Q&A button. If any time during this webinar you'd like to ask a question of, of Emily, please type it into the Q&A box. Uh, we've already received some questions. Um, we have quite an audience uh, attending this, this seminar today. Um, this is one of the most diverse crowds we've ever seen, um, and that just goes to show how many people are interested in the message that the Linus Pauling Institute is putting out um, and our focus on, you know, global health issues. We have in attendance uh, research scientists, health professionals, um, from dietitians, uh, naturopaths, and um, other uh, physicians. Uh, and, and nutritionists, uh, and a lot of dedicated supporters to the Linus Pauling Institute legacy and the Linus Pauling legacy, and just people who really enjoy the work that we do. So uh, we're going to have a lot of questions uh, from a lot of different sources, and I apologize in advance if I'm not able to get to all of them. But please, if you do put your questions below, uh, I will make sure that they are answered one way or another, if not in the presentation today. So uh, in a moment, Emily will be getting on to start her presentation. I'll just give you a quick uh, rundown of how we're going to be doing things today. The, the beginning, uh, we'll have uh, approximately 30 minutes of Emily talking, and then she'll stop and we'll start addressing questions. Uh, we're only on the schedule for an hour today, so um, if we run out of time, I will let you guys know, and again, we'll get to your questions um, through other channels. And please feel free to send us an uh, email at lpi at oregonstate.edu um, if, if you don't get your question answered. <clears throat> uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Emily Ho. Um, Emily comes to the director's chair of the Linus Pauling Institute from the Linus Pauling Institute. Uh, if you weren't aware, Emily's been an investigator in the Institute for the last 17 years, approximately. Um, and I remember clearly when she came to interview, I was a graduate student working in the Institute at the time. Uh, and I, I was really impressed with all her work on zinc. Um, she was coming from um, Bruce Ames's lab, is that correct, Emily, at uh, UC Berkeley, uh, where she was doing some amazing and exciting work. And uh, it was really exciting to have her on the faculty at the Institute uh, shortly after. Um, before UC Berkeley, um, Emily worked in, uh, she got her PhD in Tammy Bray's lab. And if, if anybody knows Tammy Bray, uh, she did a lot of work with antioxidants and diabetes. She also was uh, the dean uh, in the College of Public Health and Human Sciences um, uh, until recently, uh, she was the dean, and so uh, Emily and, and and Tammy worked together in public health um, uh, while she was investigating. While they were both investigators in the Lions Pauling Institute, um, and before that, Emily uh, got an undergraduate degree at the University of <laughs> I'm going to murder this Gulf Gulf in uh, Ontario, um, and. Um, and so she's traveled quite a, a, a ways across the continent in her, uh, in her academic uh, career. Um, Emily's work at the Lions Pauling Institute has taken two broad paths. Um, one is her work with zinc, where she works on defining the roles of zinc throughout the lifespan. Uh, but the other one has been on um, 
sulforaphane and, and cruciferous vegetables, whole foods, and cancer chemo prevention. Um, she's often known as the broccoli lady uh, to, to a lot of her students and uh, people who know her. Although as a participant in one of her clinical trials, I usually refer to her as the broccoli sprout lady uh, because of the number of broccoli sprouts that we had to eat during the trials. Um, Emily has been a leader in the Alliance Pauli Institute's uh, cancer program since its inception. Um, she's often championed the benefits of whole foods, and it's no wonder that in 2012, she was named the director of the Moore Family Center of Whole Grain Foods, Nutrition, and Preventive, Preventive Health. And she held that role as director until this year when she was named uh, the director of the Linus Pauling Institute. Uh, I could go on and on about Emily's research interests and her, uh, the highlights of her career, but instead I'm going to let her take the stage and talk about the future of the Linus Pauling Institute. And just one more reminder, if you have any questions during the talk, just put them in the Q&A uh, section below. And with that, Emily. Great, thank you for that uh, nice introduction. Let me um, share my screen and welcome all of you. Just give me a moment here. There we are. Is it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to check the queue. Uh, is the, Alex, is this uh, viewing properly before I get started? I can't quite tell. You look fine to me. Okay, great. All right. I know all of us have been negotiating how to how how to how to communicate in different ways, and uh, I thank you all for being here and taking the time from your day to hear about um, the future vision for the Lions Paul Institute. Um, I'm really very honored to be serving as the, the new director of the, of the Lions Paul Institute. As um, Dr. Michaels had mentioned, um, I've been at the LPI as a faculty for close to, um, to two decades now. And uh, the mission and the, the caliber of science at the Lions Pauling Institute was really one of the main reasons that attracted me and, and really wanted me to be uh, a part of, of Oregon State University. Um, and I've had the fortune to uh, interact um, for these many years with our fabulous faculty. I have great examples from our previous leadership, um, including Don Reed, Balls Fry, uh, Fred Stevens, and uh, Richard, Richard Van Bremen. Um, again, I'm really sorry we can't be uh, together in person. Um, for those of you who do know me, um, you know that I, I usually love any excuse to uh, throw a good party and share a lot of good food. So that's definitely my preferred way to do things. But um, unfortunately, we can't do that. So um, this, is, uh, this is what we, that we're stuck with. But uh, I'm happy that all of you can, can be here with me. So the mission of the Lions Pauling Institute um, is to promote uh, optimal health uh, through cutting edge nutrition research um, and trusted uh, public outreach. Um, I'm excited to share with you where uh, we are with the LPI today uh, and importantly where, where we need to go. Uh, and in that vision, I really foresee uh, forging our future path uh, together. So not just the nutrition scientists, not just the scientists, uh, but also how do we include our communities and our populations worldwide um, in terms of informing and moving our, our research forward. Uh, I really strongly believe that the, the Institute and OSU are, are really uniquely poised to uh, both discover um, and enable uh, ways that individuals, uh, communities um, can really help um, tip our balance uh, towards optimal health. So I'll come back to that um, optimal health uh, several, several times uh, throughout the presentation. So we're really at a, a unique time in our history. Um, now more than ever, um, our nation's health has, has truly emerged um, at the forefront as our nation and the world's you know, highest priority. Um, and in the current situation, we're clearly given um, a lot of circumstances we can't control. But the question is, 
what can we do um, as an individual, um, as a family or as a community to really increase our chances of, of staying healthy? Uh, and that has become extremely important. You know, how can we be informed? How we can make? How can we make decisions? And how can we take um, our own action to to take take charge of our own health again? And this is exactly what the Linus Pauling Institute excels at. Uh, we have a mission to discover uh, ways that you can take charge of your health again um, and live the the best uh, life that you can. Um, independent of the current situation um, in the pandemic, our health um, in the nation uh, is, is, is in trouble. Uh, this is a slide from the, from the CDC. 60%, so one in six adults have some chronic disease. Uh, many have, have more, more than one. On the bottom of this slide uh, shows some of the major uh, diseases that are affecting the nation um, in the U.S. Cur uh, currently. Um, and this is a huge burden, not only um, in terms of quality of life, uh, but also is a huge burden um, on, uh, um, in terms of finances. So over $3 trillion uh, in annual health care costs are associated uh, with, with, with diseases. To combat and to improve the health, uh, both in, in our nation and, and across the world, uh, we really need to think about uh, disease in different ways. Uh, we need to think about how it starts. Uh, we need to think about how um, it progresses. Um, again, there are many factors in all of these leading uh, diseases and disorders are, um, are, are, are things that, that we can't control. It could be our genetics, our family history, um, aspects of our environment uh, that, that we can't control. Uh, but as a community, as a population, um, there are some things that, that we can do proactively to help tip that balance towards positive um, optimal health. And again, now more than ever, the value and the importance of, of scientific discovery um, is extremely important. Um, and then also making sure that that essential information is accessible um, and actionable to, to the population. Um, making sure that the population can act is, is also a, a critical point um, in terms of uh, in enabling uh, the, the population towards, towards better health. So what are the things um, that we um, as a population can, can take char charge of? Um, for many of these diseases, um, there are um, key lifestyle factors um, that we can control um, that can really make a, a huge impact um, in terms of both our susceptibility to uh, disease uh, and also uh, could potentially help um, with, with treatment or cessation of, uh, of the disease. And I wanna highlight this uh, second point, which is a major fo uh, focus historically um, of the Linus Paul Institute um, in terms of the foods that we eat, the nutrients that we take, um, that can be a, a major contributor to uh, many of these, these disorders. So when we look at just, just the one box, um, nutrition, um, and the diseases that are related to a poor diet, uh, they are the same diseases that are the, the leading diseases um, across the nation. Uh, so things like heart disease um, and stroke um, and cancer are one of the leading causes of, uh, of death and mortality in the United States. Um, and each of these, uh, what we consume, and what we do um, can have a major impact uh, both on the incidence um, and the severity of the, these diseases. Um, other disorders, uh, diabetes uh, and obesity is, uh, is also a, a growing factor um, that is a contributor to, uh, to these other three um, as, as well. Um, and again, uh, simply what, what we consume um, has a major, major impact um, in terms of both the prevalence and, and potential severity of, of these, these disorders. Um, I'm going to hone in a little bit more on some of, uh, um, some of the numbers in terms of the, the impact, um, if you're not convinced yet. 
So one of my research areas um, is cancer. Uh, in particular, I study uh, things like colorectal cancer, uh, breast uh, and prostate cancer. And this is a, a slide from the American Institute of Cancer Research. Um, colorectal cancer is one of the leading cancers um, in the United States. Um, and they estimate that 45% of colorectal cancer cases could be prevented simply by, again, taking charge of your own health, um, eating well, moving more, and staying lean. Um, that's over 60,000 people um, that could be free of, of, this, uh, of this particular devastating disease. That's a lot of people. Um, and again, uh, simply by uh, making uh, good lifestyle choices uh, has a, a major impact um, um, in terms of prevalence of a, of a, a devastating disease. Looking a little bit more uh, closely, um, you know, how much change do you make, need to make? And in some cases, it's not a ton of change. Um, this is also uh, with respect to colorectal cancer. So 10 grams of dietary fiber um, is estimated to reduce uh, colorectal cancer uh, by 10%. So this is just one thing. Um, that 10%, that 10 grams uh, is a cup of oatmeal. Um, it's a cup of broccoli, which happens to be one of my favorite uh, vegetables in terms of uh, cancer fighting properties. Uh, so it, it, it's not huge uh, potential changes um, that, that need to be, to be made. Um, and again, the, the impact of these choices uh, with food and diet um, have, can have a, a pretty significant uh, impact uh, in terms of our health. When we look at our inspiration, uh, uh, Dr. Lyons Pauling, um, he was a, an innovator you know, well ahead of his time. And, and this is not something uh, uh, new. Um, this is a concept that he championed uh, for many, many decades um, in terms of this concept of, of optimum nutrition um, is the medicine of tomorrow. Um, and I point this out because um, traditionally we, and even in the slides I just presented, we're talking about food, um, nutrients, um, other bioactives uh, from, from foods uh, that you know, play a strong role in terms of preventing disease. Uh, but they also uh, could play a significant role uh, with treatment, um, decreasing uh, severity of disease as well. So the scope uh, and the, the power of, of, the, of nutrition um, and these nutrients is, is not limited to uh, just stopping disease in, in the first place, that they really have a role um, across the, the full, full spectrum. Um, in terms of what we do at the Linus Pauling Institute, um, again, we really wanna build on the inspiration of Linus Pauling. Um, as a quick reminder, he is the only person uh, with two um, unshared Nobel Prizes. Uh, one of his prizes um, is for scientific discovery, uh, uh, for his work um, in the, the nature of the chemical bond. Uh, but his second Nobel Prize is a Nobel Peace Prize, um, largely for his human, uh, humanitarian work. Uh, so he really wanted to make a difference in the world. Uh, so uh, to truly honor this is inspiration of Lance Pauling, we um, at the Institute um, really need to ensure uh, that we really uh, take this to heart in terms of valuing um, the scientific discovery, uh, but also um, ensuring um, that we're making a, a, an impact, a true impact um, on society. Uh, and although uh, we have a focus uh, on food and nutrient approaches to this optimal health and disease prevention, um, we really need to emphasize um, this concept of, of translation um, and impact. Uh, so we at the Institute uh, focus on mechanistic aspects of, of healthy aging, uh, chronic disease prevention, chronic disease treatment um, as well, but we need to ensure that this flows through in terms of uh, making uh, a difference uh, in people's lives. Um, and the other piece of this is we also need to you know, understand what the, the critical issues are um, in the population in the community and have that feedback um, into the questions and the research um, that we have as well. Um, this approach uh, takes collaboration. 
Um, it takes uh, translation um, and implementation. It takes adequate dissemination. Um, so it really takes, takes a, a, a village um, in terms of um, ensuring there are multiple perspectives um, and multiple uh, points of, of expertise to really work together. And uh, again, I, I try to emphasize that this is really a, a two-way way interaction um, in terms of, of moving forward. So in terms of some of the strengths um, that LPI uh, currently has, one of the major focus areas uh, is around this concept of, of, of healthy aging. I know I've been talking um, so far quite a bit uh, about disease prevention, um, but this, this healthy aging is, is not just about uh, uh, chronic disease prevention. That is certainly a, a piece of it. Um, a term that we like to talk about is the concept of, of health span. Um, so when we talk about healthy aging, um, it's not just referring to uh, longevity uh, and living longer. It's, it's really about how do you live your life at its best capacity um, at the highest uh, quality. So again, not just live longer, uh, but how do we live better longer? Um, so we like to ask questions in terms of how do we, how do we optimize um, our, our mental capacity? Um, how do we maintain a healthy immune system um, so we can fight off um, stresses uh, and, and other infections? Um, in addition to, you know, how, how do we stop disease from happening in the first place um, so we stay, stay healthy? Um, but even if you are diagnosed with one of these diseases, um, how can we, again, kind of take charge of our health um, and, and do things to potentially help uh, slow the progression um, and best manage um, some of these disease, diseases that are some of the major um, contributors uh, to, to death across, across the nation. So who are some of our researchers? Uh, so we have interest, uh, we have researchers uh, that across uh, multiple disciplines, um, we pride ourselves in terms of being uh, multidisciplinary in nature. Our faculty are drawn upon um, various disciplines. Um, they come from uh, many colleges um, across Oregon State University. Uh, they span interest from um, understanding the biology of aging for healthy aging, um, improving memory and cognition, uh, working on aspects of, of, of things like immune uh, function, uh, looking at neurodegenerative diseases like Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS, and also looking at other age-related diseases like cancer, uh, diabetes, uh, cardiometabolic disease as, as well. Um, our research is, is, is highly collaborative, um, it's highly connected, um, so, for example, we have experts uh, like uh, Moret Traber um, and Fritz Gombart who uh, do work on specific vitamins. Uh, myself, uh, I work on, on zinc. Uh, we also have uh, researchers that focus on things like um, N3 uh, fatty acids, like uh, Dr. Jump. Um, so our researchers um, sometimes have a specific food component uh, focus. Uh, we also have some of the leading uh, natural product chemists like uh, Dr. Stevens and Dr. Van Bremen um, that are discovering uh, almost every day new uh, phytochemicals and botanicals uh, that, that are um, in, important in, in health. Uh, we also, again, um, have, have researchers that um, are interested in this, this aspect of healthy aging. So uh, looking at a biology of aging um, and what, what are the deficits that go wrong in the mitochondria, um, sometimes in the immune system, um, and then uh, other researchers that are, are more focused on uh, age-related neurodegenerative diseases, uh, Joe Beckman that's doing work uh, specifically in, in ALS and discovering um, treatments uh, for, uh, for this devastating disease, um, and Kathy Magnuson, who is looking at aspects of cognitive function and, and, and memory. We also have some newer faculty um, that are also uh, looking at how to use uh, health data uh, and I'll talk a little bit about um, that uh, in, a, in a moment as, as well. So you can see that we have a highly diverse faculty. Uh, again, 
a major component of uh, what the Alliance Polling Institute also does is ensuring that this evidence-based information is uh, accessible um, to, to the general public um, in addition to the scientific community. Uh, we have uh, this uh, Micronutrient Information Center that acts as a, a major hub and, and resource uh, for all things around uh, nutrition, nutrients, phytochemicals, and, and disease. Um, this is one of our flagship programs. Uh, it's uh, uh, launched in 2000, so we are currently celebrating um, our 20th anniversary um, of, of the in, of, uh, at the Institute with the Micronutrient Information Center. Um, it is a resource that gets over 2 million um, users um, annually, so it's a highly uh, used resource um, with uh, expertise um, in various areas, articles on these nutrients, um, health conditions. It's uh, translated into several languages as well. Um, and again, really enables that, that full circle in terms of ensuring that uh, the information and the discoveries that we make um, and others make are accessible uh, to, to the general population. So, so where do we need to go from now? So the challenge to the Lions Polling Institute um, and, and to the world um, is really how can we better discover um, some of these factors to help individuals push them um, towards this positive balance um, and towards uh, uh, op optimal health. Um, if you think of our health as kind of this dial that again, um, what we want to do is discover and enable strategies that, that help push you as an individual, you as a family, you as a community um, towards um, this, this, this optimal health. Um, our strategy has been to, to look at some of these lifestyle factors. So again, factors that, uh, that you can take charge of. Um, so with this slide, I know it's a complicated slide um, and it's meant to be complicated. Uh, when we think about our health, um, it's a highly complicated system. Again, there are factors um, that contribute to our health that, that, that we have no control over. Uh, for example, our, our genetics, um, in some cases our, our environment, and all these factors uh, function at different levels as well, um, at the cellular level, at the tissue level, um, and, and the per person level. So in this simple model, in terms of, of pushing our balance forward, uh, the fact is uh, that uh, this dial has many gears inside of it that also drive what moves, moves forward. Um, and in fact, there's, there's likely more than one dial as well. There are multiple stresses, um, multiple factors that push an individual's balance uh, either back or forward um, in terms of their health. Um, dietary factors are, are one, one piece, but we really uh, need to think about that the challenge is, um, again, that this dial moves in different directions depending on who you are, where you are. Um, there are multi-scale effects, um, and there isn't necessarily a one-size-fits-all. Uh, and to really be able to, to think about even the focus on nutrition and diet, on um, moving this dial, we need to consider the whole system. Uh, we need to consider uh, the food that, the, that comes uh, that these nutrients come from. Um, we need to consider all of these in, internal factors um, as, as well. So doing things differently um, is, is going to be necessary uh, and doing things together um, is, is also going to be necessary. Um, thinking about uh, at the individual level, again, um, there, there isn't necessarily a one-size-fits-all. Some of those factors and uh, gears um, could be your age, um, it could be your genetics, um, again it could be where you live, uh, all come into play in terms of adjustments that you may need to make uh, in terms of determining um, what your body needs uh, to be able to function um, optimally. Uh, an important theme for the future is you know how do we bring um, XPs together uh, to really look at all of these different factors, all of these things that we could potentially measure um, that all contribute uh, to your health. So, so how do we bring this expertise together to help solve some of these leading health problems? How, how can we better customize? Um, how can we better predict 
uh, what an, an individual need, what an individual needs. Um, this concept is, is called uh, personalized medicine. Um, and this concept of potentially personalizing nutrition um, is going to be an important future direction. Um, and we'll need to um, include the integration of all of these factors together. Um, integration of mul multiple fac facets of, of the human body um, and the environment that you live in uh, to be able to, to fully realize. Uh, so again, we have the capacity to, to individually look at, at all, all of the, these factors, but where the, the gap is, is how do, we, how do we put it all together? Um, how do we use this data um, and numbers that we're able to generate to, to, to solve problems, um, to be able to predict uh, what the problems will be um, in the future is, is something uh, that, that we need to, to closely look at. Um, there are uh, some new faculty, for example, in the, in the, in the Institute, in particular, uh, Dr. Melissa Handel and her group, uh, for example, that are using some of these similar approaches, uh, using integrative approaches uh, to integrate health data and health measurements and uh, to accelerate things um, uh, like uh, that are extremely relevant right now. Um, one is around cancer, um, and the second, uh, fairly recently, uh, she has started a, a multi-center uh, uh, project that's across the nation uh, to really use these data approaches to help accelerate the fight against COVID. Um, so this allows us to be nimble um, and, and res highly responsive uh, to emergent uh, health, health needs. So again, our, our focus uh, currently is around food and nutrient approaches. Um, but as we move forward, uh, we can consider food and nutrients you know, on, on their own, um, that we need to be able to consider uh, how these interact uh, with disease states, how they interact with, uh, with other lifestyle factors as well. So really encompassing, a, again, a, a whole body, a whole person approach to, to really look at how uh, we can better define um, and understand uh, uh, how uh, what, what are the major drivers of, of our human health and what makes each person different um, in terms of customizing their needs. Uh, looking at, at biomarkers, uh, for example, is, is another uh, major priority for me. So how do we identify early markers of disease so we can catch um, people earlier? Um, and how do we identify biomarkers for, for food intake um, and nutritional status as well? I strongly believe if, if, if you are able to couple the two, um, early disease prevention with early uh, nutrition um, detection at the same time, that the power of those two together in terms of combating disease are, is, is gonna be huge. Uh, the other thing, again, that I again want to emphasize is this emphasis on, on translation um, and impact. Um, if our work, you know, stays uh, in the labs, it, 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 it doesn't make that impact. So we really need to ensure um, that we uh, enable um, and empower um, individuals, populations to, to take the discoveries uh, that, that we make uh, and that they become actionable, that they have the right information um, and they're, they're able to, to, to act on them. And then two, uh, that the work that is done uh, or the needs and the emergent uh, health issues that happen in the population are, are things that we can be nimble um, and quickly pivot towards in, in terms of, of, of helping um, and, and moving forward. I know my time is getting closer to, to the end. Uh, so I guess the bottom line at the Institute is um, things, things are gonna change. Um, th things are evolving in terms of our science um, and how, how we wanna move forward. But at the same time, things are not changing. Um, the, the essence of the vision uh, of Linus Pauling is, is still strongly going to be uh, uh, upheld. I know many of you may have, have read uh, Dr. Pauling's book, you know, How to Live Longer and Feel Better. Um, this is really what we're trying to do. Uh, we're really trying to help you live better longer. Um, this, is, this is a passion of mine. 
Um, this is a passion of my faculty, a passion of my staff, a passion of my trainees and, and the students. All of them are extremely uh, passionate about, about your health, their health, uh, health, health, health in general. And uh, we really look forward to, to working together to help amplify uh, what we currently do uh, to make it better and have the, the Lions Pauling Institute really truly uh, make a, a, a true difference and impact um, on, on human health. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this next stage um, and I'm extremely fortunate to um, be part of this, this fabulous institute for so many years. And um, I look forward to, to learning more about you um, as, as well as we move forward. Um, just to close, again, just want to uh, to thank you. Uh, want to give you a, a few resources in terms of um, if you want to learn more about our research uh, that that we're doing. We have a, a fabulous newsletter. Um, you can check out our website here as 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 well. Um, again, a, a go-to resource in terms of uh, information is our Micronutrient Information Center. We currently have a, a 20 for 20 campaign that's going on as well. Um, reach out to me, reach out to the Institute uh, with your questions. There's lots of different ways that, that, that you can get involved. Uh, we have ongoing um, studies um, that, that uh, are always looking for participants. Uh, and we just love to be able to, to share our message uh, out broader. And, and all of you are really our champions in terms of helping uh, amplify uh, and ensuring um, that these, these important discoveries are, are being being used and uh, are being brought to the community at large. Thank you. Okay, I am back. Um, I don't know if you wanna stop your uh, slideshow there, Emily, for the moment so we can have a little chat. Um, thank you for that presentation. That was wonderful. Um, uh, questions have been coming in uh, through different channels, uh, not just the Q&A below, but on, on the, um, uh, our, our uh, email. Um, so if you have any questions um, that you don't want to type into the, the Q&A here, uh, you can certainly send us an email at lpi at oregonstate.edu and we'll definitely uh, respond to every question that has been sent. Um, I, as I mentioned before, uh, we won't be able to get to every question that was sent to us today, um, but keep sending them. We'll, we'll, get the, we'll get to them one way or another. Uh, I'll make sure of it. Um, so let me, let me start with a question about uh, Lions Pauling. Um, one question that came in was, will the Lions Pauling Institute be doing more to promote uh, the the life and legacy of, of Dr. Pauling himself, his history, uh, especially to younger generations that seem to um, not necessarily know the impact that he's had on the world. Uh, that's a, the hard, hard yes, uh, and, and absolutely, that um, Dr. Pauling's work is, is our inspiration. And we at the Institute have a strong commitment in terms of ensuring um, the next generation of scientists are equally inspired uh, as, as all of us are in terms of his legacy and, and what he has done. Just as a, a side note, um, so I have two sons. Uh, my, my older son is a middle schooler and he goes to uh, the Linus Pauling Middle School um, here in, in Corvallis. So when he started middle school, I asked him specifically without prompting uh, or previous history from me, you know, what uh, what do you know about Linus Pauling? And his first answer was, well, mom, he's this genius scientist. So I thought, okay, that's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was just found myself into a, a conversation the other day where somebody turned to me and said, what is orthomolecular? And I said, oh, let me tell you about orthomolecular. <laughs> the word Linus Pauling coined. Yeah. Um, so, um, we've, we're getting a lot of questions about specific nutrients and specific uh, dietary factors, and I don't think we can field all of them here today. Um, I, maybe if you just want to do it in a, in a broad sense, um, like what, um, 
how we approach these type of topics, you know, uh, like if someone has a question about vitamin C, if they have a question about vitamin D, you know, how would they best get that answered at the Institute? Yes, like I had mentioned, um, the Micronutrient Information Center is usually where it, uh, I direct people as their, as their first stop. Um, it's an amazing resource. Um, it's kept up to date. It's vetted by um, and written by um, experts um, in, in the field. In, in some cases, um, those experts are outside the Linus Pauling Institute as well in terms of their, their expert review. Um, it's uh, just a fabulous source to really understand a little bit more about just the, the basics of each, each of those nutrients, but also its relation to, to, to disease. Um, so it's a great stop, um, stopping point uh, or a first place to, to look for, for information. And certainly uh, people can reach out to the individual faculty uh, as, as well uh, in terms of their specific ex expertise. Yeah, um, um, certainly, uh, if you want in-depth information about any specific uh, nutrient, um, start with the line. Uh, you can even contact the, um, the v Victoria Drake, you know, the, the head of the, the Micronutrient Information Center. She will definitely e answer your emails or at least get them to the uh, person that will uh, answer your <laughs> emails if you've got a specific question. Um, uh, again, scrolling through all the questions, let's, um, here's, here's, a, here's a one that uh, we get a lot, and that's, uh, what do you recommend that seniors uh, do um, to monitor their levels of vitamins and minerals to watch out for any deficiencies? I mean, are there any blood tests that, that they can take, or, or is it really, are there other ways of, of just seeing if you've got enough? Right, and that's a great question. Um, Unfortunately, for a lot of the micronutrients, um, especially in older individuals, there isn't a great test. Um, so for example, in my expertise area with zinc, uh, where we already know that zinc is a, um, especially right now, a very important nutrient to make sure you're, you're getting enough of um, to boost your immune system. We know that uh, older individuals have an increased susceptibility to uh, deficiency because they tend to eat less of it in terms of zinc rich foods which tend to be protein rich foods and richer foods um, and at the same time there are some problems of absorbing it but yet uh, the blood test that you take uh, that your doctor will recommend um, isn't a great test in terms of uh, finding zinc deficiency you have to be pretty zinc deficient already to, for the test to show positive so even though your test may say you're okay, you may not be okay. And there's some other examples of that as, as, as well. Um, bottom line though, I still make sure, you know, you consult with your doctor in terms of um, your needs. Um, some of the nutrients that we already know that are um, kind of more uh, problematic as we get a, uh, older are things like zinc, um, uh, vitamin D um, is, is another one, uh, and calcium that, uh, that, that, that you can monitor. Um, I recommend a lot of time um, for persons of any age to, to make sure that they, they uh, as backup, and it's certainly safe uh, to take a multinutrient, a multivitamin and multimineral to ensure uh, that they're getting um, some of those gap, gaps filled, out, filled in. Um, but at the same time, there might be certain cases uh, in some uh, in some populations where even that that uh, standard RDA uh, multivitamin multimineral may not be enough, and you may need to, to up it a little bit more as well. Um, but unfortunately, I mean that's a big area of of interest in the in the institute in terms of how do we define better biomarkers um, so we so we can develop better tests uh, so we can catch this earlier and make stronger recommendations to people. And um, are there any specific recommendations that we, uh, that you'd like to give to the people who are older? I mean, you know, multivitamin is a great um, solution at any age, really, uh, if you're not getting enough to the, the food that you eat, but um, are there specific nutrients um, that you'd like to highlight in, you know, kind of the aging process? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, bone health is, is always um, uh, a concern as we age. So making sure you're getting enough calcium um, and vitamin D. Um, again, zinc um, is another one that uh, I usually recommend uh, for older adults as well. With zinc, um, 
you do need to look at your, your multivitamin, multimineral um, label. Uh, zinc is one that sometimes is, is not included in the formulation. Um, it has some uh, poor taste qualities. Um, so sometimes it's not included. Um, my, my husband has made the mistake of coming home with a zinc-free multivitamin in the past, and he's not in charge of, of, of buying multivitamins anymore for the family um, because of that. But you, you do need to look at labels because uh, it's not consistent, um, especially with little to zinc. I think vitamin D, uh, as I mentioned already, not only for your bones, um, but for your uh, immune system. Uh, vitamin E is another one uh, as, as well. Um, again, if you go to the Micronutrient Information Center, um, there are some uh, specific LPI recommendations for older adults there as well. So let me uh, ask you a couple questions, um, changing, kind of changing the topic from the nitty gritty about uh, micronutrients, but more to um, how the Lions Pauling Institute is negotiating uh, the landscape uh, currently when it comes to funding sources. You know, it's, it's difficult to get funding for micronutrient research sometimes because it's not seemed necessary. Uh, but also kind of this perceived bias against um, of nutrition research or at least micronutrient research um, where, you know, studies aren't being taken seriously or, or the impact isn't really been um, felt by the general population? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think um, people care about their health and um, the approach that we're taking is, again, as I mentioned in my presentation, is, is you know, how do we work together? Uh, so it might not be a study specifically focused on an individual micronutrient anymore, kind of looking at more combinations. And that's where I think the, the where we need to go. There's likely not one magic bullet um, when it comes to either, uh, you know, medications or, or uh, phytonutrients and, and, and nutrients as, as, as well. I think um, as, as, as we think about the whole body system as, as well, kind of pivoting more towards nu nutrients is, is one of those, those factors that we, that we need to focus on, but we also need to consider the other components of health uh, to, to really make the biggest impact on, on stopping disease, preventing it, um, and, and stopping the severities um, as, as well. Um, so really taking this integrative approach is, is, is something that a lot of us have, have pivoted towards. I'm going to uh, point out uh, one one of the questions that, that it's not really a question that came through, but one of the the our audience members would like to point out that there are plenty of re registered dietitians across the state who would help uh, when we talk about earlier micronutrient um, deficiencies. So help you evaluate your diet and help you uh, figure out if you're you're getting enough. So I mean, there's there's definitely uh, help out there and support, uh, uh, especially for evaluating your your dietary habits. Yes, and I think that, and that's one of our limitations right now, that I'm always shocked um, when I look at electronic health records, um, that, you know, diet information isn't something that seamlessly is, is there for the clinician to, to see, um, and it's not consistent in terms of uh, patients that are, you know, consulted with a, a, a dietitian, um, and, that, and that needs to change. Yeah, um, and we need to, of course, make those connections uh, with the healthcare providers that are um, that are doing this work, um, and uh, and you know convey the research to them as well. Um, the uh, this is kind of a, a another broader question, but oh, actually, l let me ask you the question about uh, what people can do if they're interested in being um, part of the a scientific study or uh, the clinical community, kind of this um, crowdsourced research. I mean, do we have any, uh, do you have any comment on plans for crowdsourced research in the future? That's definitely um, something that's on my list in terms of something I'd like to, to cultivate. Um, again, kind of this two-way concept of trying to understand, you know, what's going on in the populations. Um, but at the same time, um, there, there's also mechanisms currently um, obviously right now in terms of um, with the uh, restrictions on, on just research activities at, at the university because of COVID um, that a lot of our ongoing um, 
studies uh, that involve people in particular have been kind of um, been put on hold. Um, but in general, um, amongst the investigators, um, there are always there there are usually some opportunities in terms of participation uh, within research projects. Um, you might have to eat broccoli, um, but um, uh, there's there's a lot of op opportunities to. Uh, to provide uh, that I'd like to cultivate in terms of providing input, um, perhaps looking at uh, kind of more citizen science, community crowdsource based uh, research. Um, I know several of our investigators have some proposals out currently um, doing that type of work, um, but there's lots of different ways that you can get involved. Yeah, I'm sure we have a uh, very wide um, population that, that follows our research that takes vitamin C. So if we ever want to do any uh, vitamin C population-based studies. I think we've got a, a great cohort going on here. Um, uh, well, you mentioned the C word first, so uh, let's let's have a question about COVID nineteen. Um, so I I think um, a lot of people have wondered why uh, or how the the message about nutrients, micronutrients, healthy eating, um, healthy um, uh, immune system uh, can get to the places where it matters in terms of like hospitals or um, healthcare providers. You know, what what are what can we do to bridge that gap between the two? Um, most not only just what the, is the Alliance Pauling Institute doing, but what can people do? Yeah, no, that's a great question um, and a, 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 an important um, issue now. Um, not only responding to uh, COVID, but uh, for for many of the the diseases, uh, in a lot of cases, you know, making sure that you uh, are taking enough vitamin D or or vitamin C or, or zinc um, is kind of a low hanging fruit. It's inexpensive um, and generally uh, low low toxicity. So so why isn't it widely more widely uh, promoted? Um, I guess some of the questions come around. You know the the some of the pitfalls, I guess, is uh, with these micronutrients, um, stage really seems to matter. Uh, why I was talking about kind of early detection methods uh, is really important because where these nutrients are going to play a bigger, biggest role is, is early on in the disease. And um, especially with COVID, um, at this point, um, kind of our tools for detection are, are, are limited. Um, and then hence some of the more rigorous studies that are done show very mixed results because there's an entire continuum of the disease that that, we're sh that the treatment is, is being affected with. Um, but the bottom line is, um, I certainly would love to look at you know working more with the, the health community in terms of getting that message at, at a minimum, making sure that we prevent deficiencies. And these deficiencies uh, are widespread um, already in, in the pop population. Um, some may be undetected um, because of, of lack of testing, but um, again, kind of this insurance policy of uh, advocating for uh, micronutrient um, in intake is is something that uh, I do believe is important. And uh, to be honest, I'm not I'm not sure why there there is so much ap apprehension. Um, but having partners, uh, advocates is is going to be critical. I think we may have lost Alex. Okay. So um, I think at this point, maybe this is a good time to wrap up. Sure. Um, I will send the questions to you, Emily, so that you guys can reach out to those that maybe didn't get answered. And they, I did see that the few of those questions were all um, some are similar, so that'll be easy to answer. Um, but I'd like to thank you again for um, your talk today, your time. I know it's precious nowadays. Um, especially with Zoom fatigue. So thank you. Thank you for stepping in and um, yes, thank you all. phone call with us. Um, in the meantime, I would recommend visiting LPI's website. Um, I'll pop up that email address or that web address here in one minute. Um, but once again, thank you, Emily, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.